the short run. So thank you for coming. I uh, appreciate it. All right, we got two special guests for you. We got Noel North. Inserted into my neck. 
my head will just eviscerate into a rainbow spray if I say the wrong thing. So all I'm allowed to say is just down. Sit over there. Is it really making you uncomfortable? If your head explodes. Yeah. <laughs>
I played a, I played a pretentious, complete narcissistic. I played myself. <laughs> no, my character, that Jerry Lancey character was actually my. It was that was my. It was Ted Knight from Caddyshack meets William Shatner. <laughs> the mocap game, Jerry Lancey. Made my first suit out of cat hair. Uh, I was filming an episode of Mannix. There was actually a character I used to make up when we did Uncharted, and I would just go to Gordon Hunt, the director. I'm like, remember when we uh, took Elkie's summit for dinner and Tom Springs for the weekend? Oh my god. And, and, and I'd say, despicable dirty things. <laughs> if you can make a 75 year old man blush, you do good. <laughs> There was no Ned's, there was no audition. There might be. You people stay off the internet. You're a star. They just let you do it. Some of us have to audition. No, it was, well. No, there was no audition. They had, I was just doing a bunch of cartoons at Nickelodeon at the time. And my kids were young and they loved that show. And I saw. She did all the voiceover stuff there too. Sarah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And I just I just talked to her and I said, hey, uh, you know, if you uh, kids love that, if there's ever anything on there, and they said, I would love you to do it. Yeah, you, you want to do it? I said, yeah, but uh, it's gotta be something. I gotta wear a wig. Something to make it zany. I know that show. Okay. And they came up with the MoMA, the art teacher, and he was basically just like don't remember that. And he had white. He looked like uh, Andy Warhol. And he talks with that accent, and it's, 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 art is about pain, that's why it's called painting. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you, and there's one for you. Yeah, one for so actually, uh, this one is for both of you. Uh, I work media, I've been working with that shit, interviewing the celebrities, uh, cosplayers. What's the great time?
And so many people will go, hey, you ready to come to dinner? I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because you'll notice, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I rarely will sit. I, because if I sit, I can't get back up. <laughs> uh, I think the, the, this con is great, though, because of the venue. And the hardest thing sometimes is we'll be at some conventions where the ambient noise, ambient, ambient, I'm like, where am I from? The ambient noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfectly acceptable in your act. No, it's loud. If you're like, it's loud. So when I'm talking to you, like, oh, where are you from? And then you realize after three days, you can't work on Monday because you just sound like Sam Elliott. I use a joke, I'm like, were you born with like a lit cigar in your throat? <laughs> It's amazing. It's just, people always say, they, they're, like, we've had things times where they like, auditions come down, they're like, I want you to read for Wolverine. I'm like, nope. <laughs> they're like, why? I'm like, so I want to do a bad Steve Blue impression. <laughs> He's Wolverine, I'm not, I don't want to touch it. I won't touch that, I won't touch the Hulk. Uh, that's bread. Yeah. Well, if your parents fed you gravel, maybe you could do it. <laughs> they did. They did. They did. Hot gravel. We got rocks. <laughs> We, we ate one at a time and we lost all the time. You were grateful for it. Yes. You picked the next person. Didn't I pick the one before? I don't know. Uh, right in front. Uh, well, I know he loves drowning, drowning puppies. puppies. <laughs> uh, I'm getting into scuba diving now. I really like it, but I moved to Hawaii. You should I think I should, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, moving to Hawaii was good for mental health, actually, between conventions, so that, that's great. But um, we're becoming pretty decent scuba divers now. So we I got to get certified a few years ago, and now in Hawaii, my wife goes every week, and she rubs it in. She's probably doing it right now. Uh, but yeah, that's, it's really nice, because you go under there, you don't have to talk. Uh, you just look at things and be aware of sharks. And that's pretty much it. It's it's amazing. I mean, it's like flying underwater. It's fantastic, and it, it just calms everything out. You have to you have to be aware of your surroundings, but you can't think about any of the garbage that's happening in your life. You really have to be present. And so I've always looked for things that kind of keep me present. So it's lovely. Yeah. Uh, still drowning puppies. <laughs> just in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I drown people. <laughs> um, um, I, you know what? I, I, so I, I don't live in California either. I live in Atlanta now. And, um, we started uh, kayaking and, and just hiking. And I never liked hiking in LA because it was just hot and dusty, kind of like here. <laughs> no, but there's, there's no tree cover. And, but there you actually go in the woods and there's creeks and streams. And, so I, I do like a lot of our work is inside, as you can imagine, in a booth. And, and in free time, I, I go out. I don't want to be outside. Uh, I attempt golf. It's just it's so frustrating. <laughs> it's so frustrating. And then you hit one good shot, and you're like, I got it. <laughs> so anything outdoors at this point. <clears throat> uh, that's kind of just because, and you're right, because there's something very. Turn this into a thing, but something really healing about nature. I just like, and, and I've read about it, it's like, it really kind of rejuvenates you. You're like, oh, a tree, bird, it just kind of stops the noise. <laughs> and we are constantly on phones or on monitors or TVs, and it just, and the noise, um, it's really kind of nice just to go, you know, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, just, I'm so old. I love this new you used to, you. I you know, used to be so surly and nothing mattered. Now, who cares about life and people? Well, nothing, <laughs> nothing matters. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, no, but yeah. That's, that's good. Really good questions. Is that a hatchet over there? Oh, you have a giant knife. The person with the giant cleaver. That's a phone. Oh, yes. Or is that a cleaver phone? I don't know. How did the, how did the cleaver phone open? Oh, yeah, what is your question? Do you have a question or are you just. Yeah. Oh, you're just threatening. All right, no, listen, if you have a, listen, you got a cleaner phone, you guess your next question. I'm turning you guys into sushi, you said to think about puppies. Okay, fire away. What's your How question? did the opportunity of you becoming Thomas for Logic come about? 
Oh, wait, say it one more time. How did the opportunity of you becoming an autonomous for Logic come about? Oh, I, I begged Logic. Uh, no, that was, that was actually kind of a weird thing. For those of you who don't know, I, I've done a lot of voiceover work on Logic's albums, the hip-hop star. I don't know why he wanted me to do anything, because I'm like twice his age. Because you're like, three times his age, actually. Yeah, well, he, as it turns out, he was a fan of video games and anime growing up in Maryland, and he grew up in a really rough environment. And those were the, the things that really gave him solace and made him feel like he was a normal human being and it kind of got him through some really hard times. So once he uh, was just about to release Under Pressure, his first big album, uh, he realized that he could call pretty much anybody he wanted and ask him to be on his albums. And so he called my agent and said he was interested in me doing something on his album. And I said, why? <laughs> so why do you want this old fart on your young hip hop album for? But it was really meaningful. The, these shows that I worked on, the shows and games that I worked on were really meaningful to him. As it turns out, he moved to a place that was right down the street from my house and invited me to come to, over for a, a pastrami sandwich or something. I don't know what we had. But it was amazing. And then uh, he just told me, the, the first thing he said was, he goes, I know it sounds weird, he goes, but I open all my shows talking about peace, love, and positivity. I don't talk about hate. You know, I, I really try to lift people up. I said, I don't know who you are, but yes, whatever you want me to do, yes, because he was such a cool guy. And so that night, he went back to his place and he wrote all of the lyrics for Incredible True Story. And we recorded it like two weeks later at my house, and I shoved uh, Kevin, the guy who played Kai, into my little booth with me to make him as uncomfortable as I'm making Nolan right now. <laughs> and we had a, a blast doing that, and he's become one of the dearest people in my life. He's, I call him my little brother. We've been texting all weekend. He's amazing. So, and he's got some amazing stuff coming up soon, too. So, if you don't know, know Logic, check him out. He's incredible. Thank you for that. No more? No more questions? <laughs> Switch characters? Uh, well, wait, let's pick one I can do. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm like, I don't know. He's got, uh, he's got this range that I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that blood throat. Um, I really liked it. We worked together on Transformers Prime. I loved his Starscream. Uh, so I did Starscream. <clears throat> Starscream. Maybe we used to joke like Starscream. Heels. Yes. Because no problem with that is. If, if, if you see the, uh, the animation, it's cool. He's definitely in heels. <laughs> you can dance backward in heels. <laughs> I played Deadpool once in a game, and I thought I was pretty good at it until I heard his Deadpool, and I went, oh, no, you're my Deadpool. Because he's just weird, but you try. Yeah, I tried. I tried that, and I got paid. It's so. actually one of my favorite scenes in the Deadpool game is where Chuck came out. He's like, and he's like, and we went through like a hundred things. Like, why won't you wake up? Walker, this is why I hate you. This is because I love you. And you just, like, and, 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 and just keep slapping him back and forth. We just, we just kept making things up. This is what the Queen made with This is because Chuck is better than Caramel. It was just like, nothing made sense. Uh, it's so hard to work in a booth with him because this is what happens through the entire session. Well, the, the first time I met him, he spent about 25 minutes telling me about his vasectomy and showing me <laughs> graphically describing the process of it. I don't even know your name yet. When he took my doctor's number. I did. It makes me cry in the studio laughing so hard. It's really, they, I have to be separated. I couldn't speak in my vasectomy. <laughs> the guy was doing it, and at one point they cauterized things, and I just go, Doc, you smell bacon? I smell bacon. He goes, he goes, please don't make me laugh right now. <laughs> it's kind of like looking through I hear she did that. Because you don't want me to laugh right now. I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on. And then I turned as a nurse there. Hmm? Uh, turkey or pig? <laughs> Curious stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All these details. Uh, so I'm so you in the hat right here. Yes. Um, I think she is. Um, in That's just 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> That's for you. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Shepard. I love Grunt so much. I just love the Grunt speech. Anyway, I was wondering what it, what you have to go through to make your register so low that. We went. So we went. We went through a device that pitches me down. So I recorded him like this. <laughs> but they pitched it down electronically another semitone or two. So I didn't have to work I didn't have to work that hard. I just I just read words on the page. You know, a lot of people don't know that that's done uh, one of the most famous ones, like Laugh fart. 
like you, Mrs. <laughs> no, I mean, it's funny. It's, it's actually the first time, and I don't think this was written until later, but I, I think that session is one time he sat there and goes, all right, so I'm like, dick to Finn. I go, ah, I get it, because the victim inside of the dick. I hate you, Tim. <laughs> I really think that's when it started, and then Craig, right, he wrote it down. Yeah. Like, I hate you. So it just became a hatred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see, socks, well, ripped off and swallows. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, look that up later. <laughs> that's even worse. That's even worse. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. The parents don't let them look it up. It's your fault if it happens. <laughs> If storks bring babies, what kind don't? Swallows. I didn't write it. Come on. Uh, say left or right, quick. Left. You, right there. Yeah, you. Yes. Bebop episode? Yeah. Oh god, I like them all for so many different reasons. So true. Uh, it changes day to day. Today, Mushroom Sama. Yeah. <laughs> because it's so crazy and drug induced. <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite Uncharted game? Two. Yeah. Uh, I like my children, I like them all. <laughs> no. Uh, two, I thought, was the one that had the best pacing of. Like a movie. If, if you go back and play it, every end of every scene spurs you to the next one. I right? tell people there's no time to pee, get something to food, nothing. It's like we gotta find Elena, where's Chloe, stop the garbage. It's, it's, it's the, the pacing uh, is just relentless. Um, you know, in games, I think developers got to a point where they're like, hey, you know, great, we can do it. So they you finish a level and say you'd explore environments and do things. It's like. But the story, I, that's what I loved about Uncharted 2. I think it changed gaming you know, for that respect. That, you know, and then when people went back to one, it just it was like a film. And it was like a playable film. You know, when you're on that stick, you're Nathan Drake, not me. You know, and I think that's, uh, that, was, <laughs> that's cool. that was my favorite. That's so cool. You pick. Okay. <laughs> I have like a right here. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Um, I've never played the games, so, uh, but I, I love voicing bits of them. Yeah, for Epic Children, yeah, that was really cool. I, I don't know anything about the remake, I'm not going to be in it. They recast us, so, I barely watch the stuff I'm in, so I probably won't pay any attention to it. Um, but I wish them luck, I hope they do really well, honestly, I do, I care. And there's always room for new people to try new things, even if it's not as good. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but playing Vincent was was really great for me because I was doing a lot of screaming gigs at the time, and Vincent was just whispering the entire time I was in there. So it was like a therapy that I got paid for. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I did play with Dirge of too. Thank you for caring. I appreciate it. Way in the back. Are you going to make a return in the next Call of Duty? Zombies. I have no idea. <laughs> if they let us. No, yeah, listen, we park outside and picnics in the Activision Park. <laughs> Just like, remember us? I was the nicest one. <laughs> By the way, I have so many people come back and they say, God, you worked up in that thing. And just, I cried, man. You know, he was the nicest one. And I said, <laughs> might be the pinnacle of my career to make a World War II era German lovable. <laughs> That's the top of the mountain. It's all downhill from here. I just became it's all down here from here. No, Dodge Ram. <laughs> just so they know, we are available if they ever want us yeah. again. Yeah. I'll wash your car! Dixie okay, uh, will wash your car! I see a watch and monkey. Uh, <laughs> you'll lick it clean after. Uh, red arm in the back there? Um, I have a question um, for Steve, sadly. Um, sadly. <laughs> sadly for you, because the answer will be shit. Um, I was going to ask, 
Um, since you voice Spike Spiegel, I was gonna ask, do you have any certain favorite lines for him at all? My favorite line is Spike. I love the kind of woman that can kick my ass. <laughs> Amy Hennig wrote the first three games, and uh, she's a genius. So uh, there's a, I, there, yeah, there's some ad living that I've done, but she wrote most ninety percent of it. I know that one of your kids said he got wet and Yeah, yeah. That okay. So that story. <laughs> uh, he still thinks he's owed money for that. But, uh, there, you can steal from your kids, just so you know. Uh, no, uh, yeah. So. You understand everything was motion captured. It's all all the Uncharted games, and but they did something very very interesting. And the parts that aren't the cutscenes or, or the in-game cinematics, uh, they would Naughty Dog would did something that no other company's done. I don't know why, but they they would have the, somebody in the developer's office play through a level, and you know walk around famously like the chateau level in three. You walk into that chateau and you look up at the, the paintings and they would just walk through the environment, do and then go through and run through and play the and we would watch this in a studio. And if if it was Sully, Richard McGonagall would be there. If it was the three of us we'd all be sitting in, in uh, at the Technical Burbank and we were uh, we'd watch it and we'd have some lines that they wanted to get, you know, like, hey it's over here, like, this way. And, but we would, we called it chasing fiction. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I hear me, I hear me twice. It's really, I, I, I listen. Uh, Say my name. <laughs> uh, this we called the chasing picture. We would watch it. So I'd be sitting there with coffee. And like, Sully, it's over here. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, some things like that in the in the actual uh, in game in game. <laughs> you do have a question. Okay. What? Do they make you wear the leotard with the balls? Can you rape <laughs> someone? <laughs> uh, or not the leotard, but you, <laughs> you did have a ball so it's right here. Uh, no, they, so the early games before we did the head, that she was like a little skull cap, and the the, the mic was here. And they take it to you. It was here, so when you're actually doing the in-game scenes, this little lap mic was right up here. So when we did it in the studio, they'd have microphones, but we'd had to wear the hat. And then at one point, we like, they said a little reflection, so they had this big long piece of velvet or something, like that. and we put it over our laps. It was the most bizarre thing. Just <laughs> like, yeah, here's your hero, here's your Nathan Drake. <laughs> <laughs> did you choose the last one? Yeah, I don't know. How uh, about you, Raiders? Yes, you. Industry-wise, 
uh, from Last of Us and Uncharted. Uh, you know, I think they've got a lot of things. I want to do a new IP or something, you know, just to start doing some other things. So, and I don't think if it's not Amy, if it's not Naughty Dog together, it's not that, then is it, you know, how do you do an Uncharted? And if they are doing one, they haven't called me, and then it's not much. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be doing that one like seventy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't either. That's just real. It doesn't even really matter. Nobody listens. It's Steve. It's your turn. No. It's my turn. Don't even try. Uh, <clears throat> Spidey hand. Spidey hand. Uh, well, I want to ask where your guys are most. I was just telling somebody about this today that the weirdest thing that I ever did that was so much fun, I did this thing called Cashmere the Flying Camel. And it was it was an audio book. Brian Cranston narrated it. It was Colleen Colleen O'Shaughnessy played all the female roles. I played all the male roles. And it was a great story. It was this amazing fantasy story. But they would travel to all these different lands trying to solve this puzzle, basically. And one of the lands we traveled to was uh, the land was constructed constructed from all the fears and negative emotion uh, of of humanity, and basically it manifested in an entire landscape made out of human feces. <laughs> and I got to, that took a turn that I did not expect. Kids thing, and now it's and I got to voice that, and it was just this <laughs> bubbling, gnarly but super friendly guy so he would just sort of pop up in different parts of the landscape and continue the conversation. It's fantastic. So, kids, it's, it is, it's kid friendly, surprisingly. So, I don't think I can follow that. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't, I don't, that I don't do small things. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, in, in, in games, the first one that pops out is Sigmund, Ratchet and Clank crack at times. Like, oh, sir, it's just this little one character. I'm sure I love it. And that was oh. kind of cool. And, uh, I, I get to, we, well, you've done it too, we get some animation like uh, Star Trek Lower Decks and Rick and Morty have done a bunch of, they're just people like, who were you in that? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I was a teenage kid on a couch. I was this, I'm Scroopy Doopers. I, I don't really get a lot of character names, but you do, you get to go and, and sometimes it's, it takes 15 minutes. It's yeah. like, they'll be like, okay, you just need a line here and two lines for this guy and then this guy. And, you know, it, it's just, sometimes those small little roles are, 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 are fun because you can, there's no make commitment. It, no commitment, and you can make it your, your own. And it's, it's great. I love playing stormtroopers because they have like a 30 second lifespan. <laughs> <laughs> You know, TMNT, when they did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, after I did the movie, 2007, you weren't born, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so old. You're older. Or you. <laughs> Still so, here. Still we here. thought probably we were going to do like a turtle, and they ended up casting me as the crane. I said, oh, cool, we do the crane. The crane. Crane would have like one or two lines, and then those guys would be in there for four hours, and I'm like, I got a tea time. <laughs> same, same pay. Like, Craig must find church on this. Great free breakfast at Nickelodeon. We, food, we, out. we call that the Jess Harnell, because Jess's, yeah. <laughs> Jess's singular goal in life is to get a, uh, a one line job and make the same money as everybody else in the room and leave. <laughs> It's gonna be done. Yeah. <laughs> Work smart, not hard. Yeah. You've had your hand up forever. What do you got one? Uh oh. See? Oh, you're Steve. Yeah, you are the only one for Steve. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. And me too. Oh, God. I don't remember any quotes from it. And I've only seen the first season, so. Like, there's season. I don't have an educated opinion. First season was really good. Uh, now I'm gonna catch up on that because it's a really fun show and I think really underrated and it's just kind of catching its uh, wind now. So yeah, Lego Monkey Kid, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's it's basically the um, uh, <coughs> Monkey King story, but a new twist on it. The, the ancient Chinese Lego, 
It's now Lego Monkey Kid. Yeah, it's really fun. And a bunch of the people in it are here at the convention too. So I'm going to watch it just for you. And then I'll tell you next time. So ask me next time. Yeah. I just want to say, I'm a huge Zombies fan. I've been playing them forever since World of War, since I've like, been out. Um, I just want to know what you know, your thoughts about like how it started from just a simple mode to like being, ha having fast war with like multiple different like games. And just your your thoughts on this all the whole path going forward. I believe it's the uncanny talent of Nolan North that drove it <laughs> to where it is today. <laughs> I think people just wait on him. Oh. <laughs> no, I, seriously, you know, it, it really, I, I did a talk to him, remember, <laughs> this is funny, have you, have you seen the, uh, the documentary, doc, well, the, the, the end, at the end when we, Tom and Fred and Steve and I and Craig, yeah, so if you watch that whole thing, you'll, I think we talk about that, but I, I tell people here at the con, I don't know if you remember this, I showed up at Activision, and Steve was there, and they're like, and somebody said, oh, we're going to get you in here and make up. And I'm like, what? And he's like, you know what we're doing. I'm like, what? And, and he, to he was the one who told me. He was like, this is it. I'm like, we, 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 what? <laughs> I didn't, I thought there was a session. I thought we were doing it. I didn't know that we were doing it, uh, like a little interview. And then Tom Keane starts to tear up next to me, and I'm going, <laughs> Every, uh, I've, as much as I've enjoyed doing this over these years, this is how I, I, somebody needs to tell me things before I show up. Um, because it became the uh, fans all over to, to, you know, how much fun do we have, you know, saying, I hate George MC, and come back and forth. It's a little engine that could. It was going to be a one off. And people liked it so much, we did a second. And I still to this day can't believe they didn't do it. Zombies game, right? Um, I still can't believe Funko Pop has a, doesn't have a Richtofen and a, and a Nikolai and a Takeo. Just those three. <laughs> no, but it really, it's just it's amazing because, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's one of my people say, What's your favorite role? And Drake is my favorite role because it was me, it, it's led to so much. But if it's just pure voice, it's Deadpool and Richter are probably the, my two favorite just to do voices. And I think it's because they have no consequences to their actions. They can do anything. I can just go back and change anything. You know, so respawn. And to, to be able to work with your friends like that for that long and just, can you believe this? We made a, a record together. We made a record, a Christmas <laughs> album, and then it's like somebody that well, I imagine put it on iTunes and then Activision and said, this is our lawyer's number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, eh. yeah. We all, when, when we got the call to do that, we all said, yes, absolutely. And so much fun. And we just made the most awful record imagine. <laughs> if you have not heard this, it was called A Very Zombie Christmas. Oh, yeah. And you can find the individual tracks 10 minutes or you just love us and you're <laughs> um, yeah, it was called Very Zombie Christmas, and we recorded it in uh, Keith Aram, the producer at that time. We recorded it in his studio, and he put up the money for the, the, the orchestration. Of scotch. We drank it. I brought a bottle of scotch. I had 102 fever while we were doing it. The singing was abominable, and we just it's the first day of Christmas. That's all we gave to me. <laughs> Two shotgun blasts. <laughs> And it got worse from there. We did a Hanukkah song for Richtofen. It was, oh my god, it was... It was we did it, didn't we? By the way, by the way, do you know that? Oh, I remember it now. And it just dawned on me why that's terrible. Oh, read a book, no it was so much fun. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I tell them, I told some of you who might be here, and this is seriously, you know, to, to, to be able to work with your friends in anything that you get to do is amazing. And to, to be able to be fans of the people you work with is amazing. Um, you know, seriously, because I mean, he's, he's so prolific. And we, I did my first cartoon series with you. 
Wolverine and the X-Men. I was Cyclops. And, and oh. you know, I mean, it was just, which should have been, big hit, should have been picked up for a second season. Then you're going to say it should have been Cyclops and the X-Men. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would have been funnier. Yeah. yeah. No, but it, yeah, it was doing really, that would have been It was a hit. It was, it was on it was Cartoon really Network well. and then Marvel by, Disney bought Marvel and Cartoon Network and it was, that's why they canceled it because yeah. it was like, well, we're not going to air our show on your network. Yeah. Or we're not going to give up. It was like, it's like the opposite of the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Yeah. It's like, hey, you got Peanut Butter Chuck? Hey, it's pretty good. So it was like, hey, Peanut Butter Chuck. Like shit. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had written like nine more episodes for it. Yeah. And the season two, I was going to get to do Deadpool. Wow. Age of Apocalypse, yeah. Oh, so introduced Deadpool. Oh my god. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sad. I am sad, man. I am sad. Who has a happy question? <laughs> do I do oh, I pick? All right, how about you, Lord? <laughs> By the way, it's just Joe. I really don't care. It's <laughs> he needs a question. You do. You played Cliff in Dead Rising. Um, how did the whole like recording process for that go? Like, were you just doing the voice, or were you actually ending up doing the motion capture? I don't do motion capture, so that's an easy answer. Uh, I don't remember much about it, honestly. I've never played it. I, it was probably one of those things where I got the call, came in, recorded. In a couple of hours and I was out and I had no idea about context even because they don't give us a script in advance so that was truly one of those projects that I have no recollection of. We right. talked about that this morning. Right? Yeah. We were just like, you know, we've been doing this a while and somebody asked me, like, hey, you remember when you did this? I'm like, I do not. Yeah. And it's not, it's not like dementia. It's just, <laughs> like, it's just so, a little bit. It's, no, it's just sort of like, I, I, Somebody said, what's your favorite line in that? What's yours? <laughs> no, no, because you, you've said a lot of things in yeah. a lot of different ways. Oh, yeah. And, and it, it's, it's kind of funny because uh, like, I forgot about that song. <laughs> well, a lot of games that we record to are under code names, so we don't know what That's they true. are while we're recording, and they don't come out for like a year. And by that time, we've done 20, 30 other projects. So you, well, maybe you. Well, yes, of course, because I'm prolific. <laughs> I'm sorry if I crushed your hopes and dreams, but yeah. Was it good? <laughs> if he crushed your hopes and dreams, yes. dream big. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right there. Yes. So, uh, I have a question for both of you. Uh, first one is for Nolan. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> I think have ten minutes. What is, uh, uh, how does it feel to basically be playing Modi, the son of Thor, whose actor is actually younger than you? <laughs> I can be 
younger, I can be older. I don't know. I've played her to old grandmothers. I think so. Billy and Mandy one time. Yeah. Yeah. Me anything. I was a Viking beaver. <laughs> Typecast. <laughs> And what's, what's Steve's question? So my other question is for your character TFP Starstream. I mean this with as much love as I can. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Nothing good comes after this. It's <laughs> really distance. Right? How did you manage to make him just so eatable? Eatable? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> do you hate him? I do. <laughs> Starscream is supposed to be hateable. He's like the most punchable face in the history of animation. That's typecast. That was easy. Hey, talk real quick. Transformers Prime, you know my favorite thing that you were there when this happened. I don't know if you remember this. The first time I got to record, because I came in season two. So we, we worked in like a U shape. And like the, the, the engineers were over there, and I'm here, Steve was over there, I remember where everyone sat. And at the end, right to my left, like 10 feet away, was Peter Cullen and Frank Welker. And I remember I'm sitting there with the headphones, I'm like, you know, you read your scripts, and I'm like, I don't know, what are we gonna do, Optimus? The next thing I hear is, all the watch, roll out. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> Richardson was sitting right next to me and goes, he goes, it gets me every time too, man. <laughs> I had to sit back, I had to sit back down and wait for the mic and they were like, okay, this is what, they just picked up his line because I, I literally, huh. <laughs> because he said it, he said it, he's right there. He said the thing, the entire room did that. I got goosebumps telling the story. It turned out, it was amazing. It was amazing. And Peter was so soft spoken too and he had this pencil, thin mustache, Hollywood, dressed to the nines or the tie. <laughs> they clear his throat for 10 minutes, and then he goes, I'll be ready to go. Scroll <laughs> Do that. And the walls would flex, and everybody would kind of lose every yeah. bodily fluid they had. <laughs> it got altered into like seven year old fan girls. True. It was amazing. And then, then Frank Walker's over there, I hate this job. You're going, I hate this kind of It's everything. It's everything. It's my childhood. It's uh, in that corner. That room was stupid. Oh, we had Darren, Darren Norris. I mean, we had everybody in there. I have, I have pictures of him with string cheese hanging out of each of his nostrils, wagging them at me as I'm trying to deliver a serious line. Did you <laughs> Darren Norris did that to me. We, you know, Darren Norris was in Team America, he spots with yes. And I remember I did this, this speech where, where, uh, where uh, he, I almost became the next Prime. Remember when uh, Smoke Screen may have to be the Prime and doing this whole thing. And someone's bumming in the line ends. And I just look up and they go, okay, hold on a second. I'm like, okay. And Darren was, in, we were in the corner. Darren was sitting right there just looking at me. He had a pencil hanging out and his eyes were crossed. He went, my God, no, that was some of the finest acting I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he did the spots with And I just, I mean, it just was, every Wednesday it was the Use. best, it was one of the best shows I've ever worked on just because of the people that we were with. Use your acting, Nolan. <laughs> I know. We're done? How about one, can we do one more? Just one more. Okay. Why? <laughs> right here in the middle. Just because, yeah, because you've been shaking the arm. And, uh, like, just... uh, what is your guys' favorite college of zombies wonder weapon? Nice. Nice. The ray gun is my favorite. But if I don't have it, I will find something sharp and go shabby! <laughs> Shotgun! <laughs>